My very first video on this channel covered customized e-reader cards and featured a proof of concept on how you can print your own cards to receive the normally unobtainable Super Mario Bros. and Legend of Zelda NES items. Since that video, I've learned a lot more about how e-reader data actually works and its functionality within Animal Crossing. So today, we're going to further explore the possibilities of custom e-reader cards and how we can exploit them to obtain practically anything in the game, including a slew of unused and just plain broken items. So, let's get started. For the unfamiliar, the Nintendo e-reader is a Game Boy Advance peripheral released in Japan in 2001, in North America in 2002, and Australia in 2003. This device connects to a Game Boy Advance and is used to read special dot codes which were printed on officially released e-reader cards. These dot codes are pretty neat and work in the same vein as a QR code or a barcode where there is actual data encoded in the print that can be read through software. The idea is essentially equivalent to Nintendo's present-day Amiibo, where special physical card packs could be purchased and scanned to get in-game rewards and unlock special content. However, the e-reader was not very popular in North America, and Nintendo only released six uniquely themed e-reader card packs. Despite the e-reader's relatively low sales, Nintendo still released a whopping 328 cards relating to Animal Crossing. Most of these Animal Crossing cards are classified as character cards, which feature a specific Animal Crossing character. And, connecting your Game Boy Advance and e-reader to your GameCube allows you to scan one of these cards at the terminal in the post office. Once scanned, the corresponding character on the card will send you a letter in the mail with an attached present. And, it is this in-game mechanic of scanning e-reader cards that is largely abusable. See, Nintendo has practically zero restrictions or authenticity checks on what is scanned through the e-reader. This is because, rather than handling things like checksums and data verification in the game, all the data is instead handled within the dot code itself. If you're confused about what I mean by this, think of these dot codes like a barcode sticker that you'd find at a grocery store. Naturally, all of the pricing data is within the barcode itself, and the actual scanner can't verify what you attach it to. For example, if you take the barcode stickers off of a banana and slap it on something like a video game, scanning that barcode will still read it as a banana. Now, I'm definitely not condoning doing this in real life, but as an example, e-reader dot codes essentially follow the same rules. That is, as long as you know how to format an e-reader dot code to be properly scanned, you can theoretically attach anything to it and it will be read as valid. Let's take KK Slider's e-reader card for example. Scanning his card normally results in him sending you a letter with a full guitar furniture item as a present. However, by modifying the data embedded within the dot code, we can instead write our own custom text in his letter and change the attached present to any item in the game. Now, this is way easier said than done, as e-reader cards are actually compressed through a proprietary format, and the process of decompressing and recompressing them is fairly complex. I went over this technical process a bit in my first video, but it essentially involves decompressing data, modifying that data's hex values, and recompressing that data all while maintaining the original file size and fixing embedded checksums along the way. I actually wrote a fairly in-depth tutorial on this before, but it is still admittedly a bit difficult to follow and requires a fair amount of technical knowledge on what you're doing. So, over the last couple of weeks, I've been quietly working on a standalone front-end application that performs all of these steps for you automatically. And, following this video, I'm proud to announce the release of the Animal Crossing e-reader character card creator. Now, this name is admittedly a mouthful, so if you want, you can just call it the eReader CCC. This program is a standard front-end executable programmed in C-sharp that supports reading existing Animal Crossing eReader character cards and making custom modifications to them. Or, if you don't want to modify an existing card, you can also just create an entirely new dot code from scratch. It's important to note that due to the differences in each e-reader card type, this application only supports character and classic game cards specifically from the Animal Crossing series. Thus, trying to read something like a Pokemon e-reader card requires specific understanding of that game and is obviously not supported. For now, the data that can be set and modified is restricted to Animal Crossing and the contents you receive when actually scanning the card at the e-reader terminal in the GameCube game. Using this app, you can customize the letter that is sent to you when you scan the card, and most importantly, you can attach any item to it. 
After you're done, you can simply save the card as a raw file, which can be used in Dolphin Emulator or as an input for printing a physical dot code to use on real hardware. While this app was programmed by me, it still utilizes and builds off the foundation of Kate Sith 2 and Tim Sherwigan's e-reader development tools and documentation. Trust me, without their published work, this project would not have been possible. So big thank you to them. Further, I'm a big believer in publishing all of my content for free. So this project is completely open source and more information, including a download link, can be found in the description. Anyways, now that we have an easier way to create our own Animal Crossing e-reader cards, what exactly does this accomplish? Well, as mentioned before, we can actually abuse this to set any item ID in the game as the attached present in a letter. Missed an event item? Don't want to wait months to catch that last fish that you need? Missing a single fossil? Well now, you can basically solve all of these problems by just gifting yourself any item you'd ever need. Now, a lot of you may consider this as cheating. I mean, what's the point of playing the game if you essentially have a custom item spawner? I actually agree with this sentiment, and while you can use custom e-reader cards for this purpose, cases like these are not why I've created this program. Rather, the main appeal to custom e-reader cards is obtaining Animal Crossing's exclusive and normally unobtainable items. I've touched on Tom Nook's secret password codes in the past, but Nintendo actually took measures to prevent you from obtaining certain items this way. Most famously, the Forbidden 4 NES items cannot be obtained through Tom Nook's secret codes. This means that the games Ice Climber and Mario Brothers are locked entirely behind their e-reader cards with no other way to obtain them. And, since these cards were among the last ever printed by Nintendo, they are extremely rare and expensive. So, if you wanted to obtain these items legitimately, you had to drop hundreds of dollars for just a single e-reader card. I'm definitely not a fan of gating off items to expensive physical media like this, so instead of breaking the bank, it's now a simple process of generating and printing your own dot code to obtain these items. And, as you probably saw coming, you can also use custom e-reader cards to obtain the normally unused and unobtainable Legend of Zelda and Super Mario Bros. NES games to play in your town. And yes, I told you that any item can be attached to these custom e-reader cards. And I truly mean any item. This includes entirely unused items which can be fun to play around with. For example, you can get the second version of the Legend of Zelda item this way, which crashes the game when you try to play it. You can also get a bunch of normally unobtainable clothes, some of which are typically only used by villagers. And yes, I feel like I bring this up every other video, but you can actually set the gifted item as the Beta Paper Airplane. This means you can actually have the airplane in your inventory, which has a very glitchy texture. Interestingly, I guess the paper airplane is really made of paper, since you can actually choose to write a letter from this item and it will function as a real letter. After you write your letter, a glitched item with ID 7FC0 will be left in your inventory, which has a weird transparent texture. You can choose to drop this item to get rid of it permanently, or you can even sell it to Tom Nook, who will treat it as a piece of trash and get rid of it for free. However, if you instead do not write a letter and choose to drop the original item on the ground, it will actually become the paper airplane if you reload the map. And if you've seen my other videos, this is indeed the same duplicating airplane which will exponentially duplicate itself every time you reload the map. So be careful or else you'll eventually crash your game. Further, everything I just said also applies to the glowing yellow cube, which acts identically to the paper airplane. So, if you'd like to play around with these items, you can, but I recommend not saving and just resetting. Some other fun items you can gift yourself include the museum fossil bases, which act as normal furniture items, an unused sickle tool that has the texture of a net, and a bunch of dummy item leftovers from Dobutsu no Mori. But of course, while these items are unused, Animal Crossing still recognizes them as valid. Because you can set any 2-byte hex ID as an item gift, there are a whopping 65,535 unique IDs that you can set. Naturally, Animal Crossing does not have that many items, so there are a ton of IDs that are outside of Animal Crossing's valid range. But again, because the e-reader has zero checks on valid IDs, you can still set any number you want. Just be cautious when doing this, since dropping certain items outside of Animal Crossing's valid range will actually crash the game when attempting to render them. If you run the game in debug mode, you'll even get a fancy crash handler that tells you that you are a great debugger for finding a game crash exception. To handle these out of range items, my program includes a list of all valid Animal Crossing items and any item outside of this range will automatically be detected as invalid. 
you can still set the present as an ID outside of Animal Crossing's valid range, but the program will warn you if you choose to do so. If you're curious to know any of Animal Crossing's item IDs, there is a wonderful mega sheet compiled by Phil and a bunch of other members of the community which documents every item in the game. Big shout out to all of the contributors to this sheet, as it was a very useful reference when creating this custom e-reader tool. I know the e-reader is pretty niche and not a lot of people will actually get use out of my program, but it was still a fun project to work on, and I hope some of you enjoy it. Again, big thank you to Kate Sith 2 for creating and documenting the e-reader development tools. Further thank you to my Patreon and YouTube members, including Lunascape, Inferno Wrath, Lorenzo, Cass, Cynthia, Tyrant Link, Mentis98, Silly Marina, Villager, Hornet, Tarumi, Vinny Diddy, Pidge01, and Kai D. And thank you for sticking around and watching. Until next time.